I, 27, M. Broke up with woman, 31, F. After a few months of dating. She is begging to know, why. I was fixed up with Emily, who is lovely in so many ways. She's sweet, thoughtful and kind. But also the most neurotic person I have ever encountered on the face of planet Earth. Our relationship was great in many ways, but what I couldn't stand was that everything was a discussion. Everything needed endless amounts of analysis. Everything, meant, something. When we were first dating, a couple of weeks, I invited her to a patio where my friends were going to be. She wanted to go but went back and forth about it so much. She wanted to go, but, was it too soon? People may think we're pushing things. Did I want her there? Was she even welcome among that circle of friends? Did they all align with her views on vaccination? Then she played devil's advocate to her own arguments. Everything was like this. Every social interaction. Every date. It was endless. I was getting anxiety about bringing things up. I was getting anxious having to bring her places. Our one and only fight was because she was taking forever to get ready for something, which had a time requirement, because she was neurotically going over everything. When she wasn't being neurotic, she was the most thoughtful person. She was generous and sweet, and was a lot of fun. We enjoyed so many of the same things and shared a lot of similar views. But, boy was she really difficult when being neurotic. She would question the minutia of everything, and just went over minute details and then would hang on to something, debate it endlessly and then try and convince herself what she was saying was rational. She was making me anxious. It spilled over. Her life was organized in a way that was very controlled and there wasn't a lot of room for someone else in her life. To keep herself organized, she made it hard to encounter situations that would make her anxious and you either went along with that, or you didn't. She flew under specific circumstances, so a desire to travel? Out of the picture. You like to try new restaurants? Why? We know the ones we go to are good. No reason to branch. It just felt like I had to participate in her life rather than create one together. Sex was another major issue. She was so terrified of getting pregnant that every time we had sex, she's panic. She was on the pill, I used a condom and I pulled out. Like, how much safer can you be? Still, total, unmitigated panic. Anyway, I couldn't take it. It was just too much. I politely ended it. I heard nothing from her for a couple of weeks. Then she sent a message asking if we could be friends. I was courteous but distant. Then she followed up with limp attempts to talk and be cool. Then she flat out asked me what was wrong with her. She's asked a few more times. Emily thinks she's got the world by the tail. She's a hash boss babe and totally killing it, whatever it is. In reality, she's a mess. Her life is so carefully orchestrated that there is no room for anyone else. She is so neurotic that she sucks the fun out of things and unless she changes, her attitude about sex is a really turn off. She doesn't seem to think there's anything wrong with her. She does see a therapist, but her therapist seems to be more of a people pleaser than she is. From what she's described, her therapist thinks she's grand. Do I give in and tell her, as nicely as possible, what my rationale was? Or do I just have to block her everywhere and hope she figures it out and gets help? Too long did not read. Broke up with girlfriend because of her anxiety and social issues. She wants to know why and is pressing, but I've been super evasive. Is it fair to tell her and hope she gets help? Going against some people here. Absolutely tell her. You have a chance to do something good here. People here are all like. You don't owe her anything, but does that matter? You said she was kind and lovely too. She didn't do something horrible to you. You can give her closure and a chance for growth. Why not do it? It can absolutely be so painful to not know why it ended. If you tell her what's up, she can decide what to do with this information. She's a grown woman. You don't have to walk through all the details with her, but you can tell her your rationale. You can always block her after if she bombards you with questions. As someone who's been dumped before, please, please just tell her. Why not tell her? It would be a kindness. But also let her know that you have zero interest in debating or discussing it further. She can agree or disagree and take it however she likes. You are telling her because you believe that she genuinely wants to know, and these are your reasons. If she pushes back even a little, just block her. Yes. Want to know what I would do? I would send her a link to this post. Up to you, you don't owe her anything. If you want to help her, tell her. If you don't want the three hours of analysis afterwards, don't. Your rationale was simple. You weren't feeling it anymore. Sure. Other reasons, quite specific reasons, led to that point. But how much or how little detail accompanies that is yours to decide. 
When a breakup happens, people often like to have reasons to justify it. Which already goes down that rabbit hole the justification. Reasons are too often points to counter and debate instead of simply being accepted. Tedious. Which is a great reason to keep it to feelings, because it's much harder to argue against someone feeling a certain way. Sure, people do still try, but here's one instance where the emotional rather than the logical response is somehow the better course. Send her this post. Then block her on everything. She needs to be told the truth if she ever has any chance of having a healthy happy relationship. In a way, being truthful is what she needs. A cold dose of honestly is what she needs. Hashtag boss babe. So she's in a pyramid scheme? You politely ended it. That is enough. You know where this conversation goes with her if you have it. It will be a dissection of every minute detail on everything. You've done your part and broken up like an adult. It'd just politely say that I have moved on and wish her the best then I'd block her. You saw what inviting her crazy into your life did and you bowed out. That was a good decision. Stay out. Honestly I was exhausted just reading your post. She sounds stressful. Husband, 38M, doesn't seem to care that his family, others, my, 34F, kids. My husband, Josh, and I have been married four years now. I have two sons 12 and 10 from a previous relationship. Their father is alive but not really in the picture and my husband has definitely taken the main fatherly role in their lives. His own dad passed away young but he has four siblings including his oldest brother, John, who is basically the patriarch of the family. John is very successful. He's owned his own company for years and has had lots of successful business ventures. His house is incredible and he's easily worth over 10 million according to Josh. This honestly seems conservative based on his lifestyle and what I've seen from his business. John is incredibly generous with most of his family. He has three kids and between their other siblings six nieces and nephews. John gives very generous gifts for any occasions to them such as birthdays, Christmas, and graduations. I also just found out that he has a supplemental health insurance plan for his nibblings as well as 50k in college fund accounts for each one. But for my kids he's done nothing. He's always polite with me and my kids but definitely doesn't treat us like the rest. He doesn't get them birthday or Christmas gifts with the exception of one year when he hosted an event for Christmas Eve and he got all the kids matching gifts, he did include them in that. But that was a one-time thing. It's not that I feel owed to the same treatment of my kids but at the same time it's hard not to feel accepted. Whenever I've talked to my husband he just says it's not his money and he would never tell him what to do with it. This weekend at a family gathering I finally summoned the courage to bring up to John the disparate treatment to which he just answered, I take care of my own, and then walked away. When I brought this up to Josh he just shrugged and said, it is what it is, and acts like it's no big deal. It's getting to the point that I don't ever want to go to family gatherings for his side, despite the rest of them treating us totally like family but I'd be lying if the resentment wasn't building. Am I being unreasonable here? And hash x 200 b. We've talked about having our own kid and I think I want to, but I'm honestly scared of my son seeing the different treatment of their own sibling this time. I am scared that'll hurt them so much more. My husband however doesn't see that as an issue at all. Too long did not read. I can't help but be angry at the othering of my kids on my husband's side, but he doesn't seem to care at all. People keep commenting like I'm acting entitled to my BIL's money. My post is about my husband disregarding my kid them's feelings, being treated as less than regularly and them feeling bad about it but my husband shrugging it off. Never did I say John should be paying for my kids. I'm not requesting money from my bill. You're being unreasonable. They aren't his nephews, nieces and even if they were you're not entitled to his money. It sounds like he isn't rude by any means. They have a biological father and another set of relatives that can make arrangements for them if needed. Know your place. You seem hyperfixated on his money. Butt out. You sound like a gold digger. I'm sorry to say, but no one is entitled to decide how anyone else spends their money. Yeah, it's absolutely shitty that he doesn't include your kids from your previous relationship, but honestly he doesn't have to. Again, I'm not saying I agree with the guy's viewpoint on this. I bought gifts for my stepkids all the time, because I believe that is what you do. However he clearly has a different viewpoint on this. LMAO all you did was further alienate your kids and make yourself look like a gold digger. I think you are heavily unreasonable and overstepping here and really are the one making this into an issue. He has zero obligation to anyone when it comes to how he allocates his money or gifts. 
As a parent you shouldn't be fighting for this perceived inequality that is really just entitlement. You should be teaching your children to not be superficial by looking for love, affection, or inclusion based on the value of gifts they are given. His wealth is no one's business except his own. Does he exclude your children from anything besides gift giving? I think you have a good point about what will happen when you and Josh have a child together. At that point you might have to say to John something like, our children are siblings and we treat them all as equal members of our family. So we need you to treat them equally, either get them all a gift or none of them. If this treatment is so unequal that your kids notice it and feel excluded, the solution is to stop attending these gatherings. There's nothing you or Josh can do to make John accept your kids if he doesn't want to. All you can do is decide how you're going to react to it. Why is John in any way responsible for you and your ex's kids? I would drop this or if you were only with him for the money then I'd divorce him because it's not fair to him. It's not his money. Well, it's not. If John needs to have been in a nibbling's life from birth to consider them, his own, there really is only so much you can do about that. Not being involved with family gatherings? Sure. Although it's just going to deepen the rift and remove any possible excuse for John to do anything for them on holidays. Your husband saying that he understands it's John's decision, but he's disappointed the line is being drawn in this particular way? Okay. But beyond that, it's not clear to me exactly what you expect him to do here when there's no way he can say, you need to love my stepkids, and you need to demonstrate that love in a material fashion, and come off looking like the good guy here. He, just put the marriage on hold for the third time. I am fed up. Me, 27 female, and Mark, 32 M. Yes real name, Idgaf if he sees, have been together since 2016. He proposed in 2019 March, we were supposed to get married at most the ending of that year. Suddenly two months into the whole thing, he tells me we should slow it down because he felt overwhelmed with the planning. He suffers from depression, so I understood. I told everyone we were waiting to get married and dropped it for a couple of months and hash x 200 b. 2020 rolls around, I tell him I would like for us to get married this year. He agreed and even said he never understood long engagements and wouldn't want that. I am happy, I call my friends and family, and everything is back on track. Then the pandemic hits and we could no longer hold the wedding. So we put things on hold. But as the year was rounding up and things were slowly getting back to normal, I suggest to him that we should just hold a small ceremony. Only close family and friends and just get it over with. He agreed at first, so I start finding a chapel we could hold the ceremony in. The next week, he said we should wait again, that he wants everyone to attend the wedding both his cousin and old friends. I was disappointed but I understood. I once again had to tell my family that the wedding was on hold. Finally it's 2021, things are as close to normal as it has been in a while. I bring it up again in April, and he said yes. This year was the best time and it would be something for everyone to rejoice over after a shitty few months. I was ecstatic and we begun planning again. This time we have found a venue. I have bought a dress along with my bridal train. All my friends and family know. I even posted a save the date on social media. The cards are the only thing in the works due to a printing error. However, since the start of the month I noticed his depression has come up again, he always seemed sad. So finally today, I tell him to start therapy again and he said that wasn't the problem. I asked him what the problem was. He said he was feeling an emotional disconnect with the world. I again say that that is something therapy can help with. He then says out of nowhere that he wants to put the wedding on hold until he can get his mind right. I was just dumbfounded and left the house. I don't know what to do or if I can do this again. How do I begin to tell my family and everyone that we are waiting again? We have deposited on the venue, the wedding was supposed to be in October. How do I handle this? And hash x 200 b. Edit. I am going to make it abundantly clear that I take his depression seriously. I have been with him since 2016, you have no clue what we have been through. And yes we have had couples counseling, he ended that too. Honestly it doesn't seem like he wants to get married. It is most likely time to move on. He does not want to get married. Leave. He's made it abundantly clear that he's depressed, unwilling to seek help and not ready for marriage. How long are you going to keep doing this? To be fair, I don't think he should be getting married, much less having kids, in this state. He needs professional help and you may need to move on. Personally I'd be taking the, fool me once, approach to this. It's time to tell him that the relationship is over and start discussing the practicalities of the breakup. I would walk. 
I'm sorry but depression is not an excuse to keep putting your marriage on hold. And if he doesn't want to see a therapist then how will he get over it? Sounds like he doesn't want to get married. Suffering from depression is no excuse to stop wedding planning in my opinion. An emotional disconnect from the world? Give me a break. What a narcissist. It's time to put up or shut up. Edit. His depression is no excuse to keep putting your life on hold. If you're putting such a premium on his depression and we don't know what you've been through, why even complain about postponing the wedding? Bottom line is, he is either an equal partner or you're his caretaker. Marriage doesn't exactly make life easier. If you're hoping for marriage, kids, partnership you might not get this from this guy. You mentioned therapy that he ended. If he's not willing to fix himself you sure don't stand a chance of fixing him for him. You can only live your life, control your mind, and help yourself. As someone who has depression, anxiety, etc. it's just like exercise. I have to whip my own ass into shape by choice. My husband going for a run, lifting weights doesn't make me any fitter. Husband doesn't want a second child. Should we split up? My husband, 43M, and I, 38F, have been together for 8 years. We have a wonderful 4 years old daughter, and now I'd like to expand our family but my husband is adamant about not having more kids. His reasons, he's tired, doesn't have free time, can't see himself doing it again. Some background. I work from home while he works outside of the house, and, as we have an even split of childcare and expenses, comes home right to being present with our daughter. Weekends I sometimes take her for activities, but he still claims he has no time to rest. I'm an only child and can't imagine my daughter growing up as one. He has a brother he doesn't get along with. Our daughter is begging for a sibling and most of her friends have one. I'm going to be 40 in two years and don't want to waste time waiting for him to possibly change his mind one day, for it to be too late maybe. While my husband and I get along fine, we've never been the best of friends and have very different interests and priorities. All of which would have been fine, but in this issue, there's no compromise I'm not willing to give up my dream of having two kids and break my daughter's heart. He's not willing to go for a second child, and I don't want to trick him and accidentally get pregnant because I think it's a shitty move, and I would love for it to happen amicably. Just for the record, when we were talking about having children at all, he was always conflicted and even said at some point he didn't want any, and then truly by chance I got pregnant the one. Single. Time. We had unprotected sex upon his initiative. I sometimes think what would have happened if I didn't get pregnant then, and get sad. Anyhow, it seems like neither of us is willing to give up, and he told me the other day I should, take the necessary steps, to get what I want. I explained to him that it would like starting to date other people and research co-parenting first, and, if that option doesn't pan out, I give it six months a year, to do it on my own with a sperm donor. He said that in that case, he will have to move out, which would be a financial suicide for the both of us and would devastate our child. I think there would be nothing wrong with us being, nesting partners, and continue living together until a major change, like a relationship or my pregnancy, happens, but I also understand it's not fair to expect him to stick around. On the other hand, I do want to stay together and expand our family, he's the one saying no. I feel stuck and a little hopeless. How should we go about this? What am I missing? Any advice is welcome. First, you need to stop projecting your wishes onto your child. She is four. She has no idea what having a sibling would be like so her wishes shouldn't have anything to do with this decision. But from your post, it is very obvious you have two choices. Stay together with one kid or have another kid nd he moves out. You don't get to make the decision of where he lives if you go have a second child, even if it is financial suicide. Couples counseling might be a good place to start, if only to get you two to a good place where you can negotiate the future together without letting it affect your parenting. I don't want to break my daughter's heart by not having a second child but divorcing over it and leaving her in a broken home is fine. Don't act like you're doing this for your daughter, because you're not. This is about you. Do you think your daughter would be more harmed by being an only child, or being a half-sibling with divorced parents, bitter dad, in financially insecure households? This is a huge, life trajectory changing compromise. One that shouldn't be made lightly. You're basically wanting to throw your partner and family away for this unknown variable of a new child, and it looks like you are not going to think about changing your plans. Totally not a reason to split up and break apart your family. Definitely a conversation that should have happened before marriage. Problem is if you break up with him, your existing daughter ends up in a broken home. Plus due to your age, sorry to be a realist. 
But what are the chances of you separating, starting over again, meeting somebody else and having another child in the next few years anyway? It's sad that he doesn't want another child but I don't think there's an awful lot you can do. Dating as a single mom with the purpose of trying to make more children? Good luck. It makes you sad to think about your kid being an only child, but isn't divorce far more traumatizing? According to your post your husband never even wanted to have kids and now you want to split up your family because of your dream to have a second child? What a cruel thing to do. It's almost as if you knew he didn't want to have kids but thought he'd change his mind one day but now that he's not you're just going to leave him. I also hope that you're hot AF. If you think at almost 40 years old you're going to find a man so eager to have kids with you. Is there another man already in the picture? You need two people to agree on kids. He doesn't. So your options are to break up or to have only one kid.